Hi, I'm Bob with Subaru Industrial Power Products and I'd like to talk to you today a little bit about carburetor cleaning and how to maintain an engine properly to uh, prevent problems. Uh, if you have an engine that's running poorly or won't start or maybe only runs on choke or the RPMs are going up and down, the engine is surging or hunting as it is sometimes referred, uh, you may have a carburetor problem that can be cleaned out uh, and, and, and addressed and, and repaired. Cause of uh, carburetor problems today are primarily due to the fact that the gasolines have been uh, treated with ethanol, which is a material that attracts moisture and causes corrosion and, and quicker gumming up of gasoline in the, uh, in the carburetor bowl. Uh, another source of carburetor problems is using old gasoline cans which are dirty or may have rust particles or other foreign materials in there which can clog up carburetor jets and passages. Okay, the first thing uh, you should do whenever servicing a, an engine is to remove the spark plug cap so that the engine doesn't uh, fire when you're rotating the engine around. The next thing you should do is turn the fuel valve to the off position if it's not already in that position. Uh, we're now going to drain the carburetor bowl using the drain screw which you will notice is positioned out here for easy accessibility. You'll need to know that when you put the uh, carburetor bowl back on the carburetor. Now while the carburetor is draining, notice or look to see what the condition of the fuel is that's coming out and you may see rust or dirt or corrosion or bits coming out. Now that the carburetor is mostly drained, I'm going to remove the bowl. In this case it's a 12 millimeter screw that uh, holds that bowl on. Okay, there's the carburetor bowl. As you can see, it's got some varnish built up in there from gasoline sitting for too long. Somebody did not drain the carburetor properly. At this time, you can uh, service the jet after we remove the air filter uh, assembly as well. To get the support screw from the top and the two retaining screws. Okay, I'll now remove the breather tube and slip the air filter assembly off. You'll note there's a gasket here which has remained intact and we're good to go. At this point here is a good chance to see the location of the main jet in the carburetor. When you lift up the float, there it is. This, is. this passage in this jet is where all the fuel flows through the carburetor into the combustion chambers. I'm going to remove that now so that we can check it out. Just unscrews with a flat blade screwdriver. Okay, to, to service the jet, spray a little carburetor cleaner in there to get that hole opened up again. I'm using an old wire brush here. Let's see if that goes through. Uh, it's recommended that you don't use, uh, you don't want to make the, you don't want to make the passage in this jet larger than it used to be. What you want to end up with is a nice cleaning, shiny round hole for gasoline to go through. Now to clean the bowl, you can use carburetor cleaner. Squirt a little in there and you can scrape it a little bit or rub it around and get that uh, varnish off the bottom of the carburetor. Okay, so there's the cleaned out carburetor bowl and uh, the goal here of course is to get out any material that could come loose and clog up that jet again. So you'll need to do this on the stem of the carburetor and other interior parts. And uh, if you have such a device available, you can use a ultrasonic cleaner or some tool like that to bathe the parts to uh, completely clean them. In order to do that, you'll have to remove the carburetor course. Let me show you how that happens. Okay, the first step is to remove the choke lever. Keep that in a spot where you won't forget to put it on. I'm now going to remove the governor link and the tensioning spring. And we'll get the hose off of here. Gasoline tank has fuel in it, so you'll need to clamp it off as you remove it. Okay. There's the carburetor. Now the location of the idle jet, which may need service, is up at the top here. In this case, it unscrews. 
some carburetor idle jets are pressed in, maybe plastic, and may have O-rings to seal them. To clean the jet, I'm going to pass a small strand of wire here so that I can uh, make sure that that opening is clear and I can see if I'm through by looking through that small hole on the side make sure that I've gone through it so it's nice and clean. Now notice too this is the limiter cap for the idle mixture screw which is not a operable item on carburetors nowadays. Please be careful not to break that off. It's, not, it's a non-serviceable part and if you break that off, you'll have to replace the carburetor. Now, due to EPA regulations, that is not a serviceable part. Uh, the first step is to uh, remove the strainer cup, which will have gasoline in it. And if there's dirt and debris in there, you'll have to clean that out. Okay, now the bowl is a, a chamber is exposed here. You will remove the hinge pin for the float. With the float comes the needle, which should be cleaned. Remove the bowl gasket. To remove the main nozzle, it unscrews from the stem of the carburetor here. And should be cleaned with the carburetor cleaner. There are holes on the side, we have to make sure those are open and clean. Remove this gasket in here. Also. And there is the seat. And the fuel passage, inlet passage, there we go. We'll start by putting in the float and the needle. There we go. Okay, now we'll put the nozzle back in, nice and clean. Screw it in until it's fully seated at the bottom. And the main jet. This also gets seated all the way in. We'll put the gasket back in now. Making sure that it's all the way into its passage there, its little chamber. And the bowl. Now the drain screw should be positioned on the side opposite where the fuel enters the carburetor. There's the screw with the gasket. Twelve millimeter. There's the drain screw. We can put that back in now. Okay. All right. I'm going to put the idle jet back in. Close in again from the top. Okay, we'll put the strainer gasket back in. You can replace that gasket if necessary. Here's the strainer itself, nice and clean. You can use a 10 millimeter wrench like that, or a 12 millimeter, 12 point socket or a wrench. Tighten her up. 
Okay, the gasket is in good shape. We're not going to replace it in this case, but if you need to, uh, now's the time to scrape the old one off and replace it. And open her up as you slide the hose on. Here's the clamp, which goes on. Okay, here's the tensioning spring, which goes on to the throttle shaft special hole and the link. Little twist, and it should pop into place. Okay, now we'll put the air filter back in after we took Put the choke lever back into position so that it engages with the choke shaft. Okay. You can guide the hose into position here into the valve cover. Replace the nuts. And the screw for the top. Okay. Everything looks good. We'll draw these screws in. Okay, now we already have the fuel lever in the open position. We have no leaks. Choke is functioning. And we'll put the spark plug wire back on. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. Uh, check our website and check YouTube for additional maintenance videos.